Good afternoon. My name is Happy Hall, and I'm the president and founder of Youth Empowerment through Soccer International. We found that YESI would be a, a very clever acronym for fellow Bahamians or people from the Caribbean, as growing up we all have different ways to use YESI. For me and my friends growing up, I would use YESI for an exclamation point, a term of excitement. And what better fit to put it with a sports program with kids, Youth Empowerment through Soccer International. We believe that soccer has the ability to empower you through sport while creating an inspirational support system throughout all communities and islands in the Bahamas. Our mission is to travel to different underprivileged communities and build free soccer and educational programs and to create lasting relationships with these communities. Key word is lasting. Our aim is to develop life skills through teamwork, discipline, commitment, fostering a positive work ethic, mental focus, and community building while creating relationships amongst the youth and their peers through the sport. The two pictures below were taken roughly two years ago, and it was a turning point in my life, and also the framework of what Yes I was. Previously, our program consisted of us doing small clinics, two-day clinics and programs, going to different communities throughout the Bahamas. We would go to Adelaide, we would go to Carmichael, we would go over to Cat Island, we would go to Dump Truck Road, we would go into all these little villages and do a fun day for the kids. We would bring soccer balls, shoes, cleats, play with them, and leave. After one of our camps, I had a mind-blowing experience. We were at the Children's Emergency Hostel, and the first day of the program went brilliant. The first session, we taught the kids all the rules of the game. We taught them how to pass, how to shoot, how to receive a ball, how to score. We had lunch, we stuffed ourselves with pizza, we jumped on the bouncy castle, we threw up, and then we played some more soccer. <laughs> the second day, I showed up, and there was a little different of attitude with the kids. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me what was going on. They didn't want to pay attention. They were fighting. They were arguing. They weren't listening to instructions. Luckily, I had fostered a relationship, a very close one with one of the boys, and I took him aside at lunch. I said, my man, what's going on? Like, what's going on with these guys? He was one of the leaders, one of the role models. And he told me, you're the same, in a very, very derogatory term. And I was like, what do you mean you're the same? He's like, well, you come, you leave us with things, and then you leave, just like our parents did. So for me, I said, okay, I have the whole wrong concept of what I want to do as a nonprofit. I want to be able to go into these communities and in these villages and create lasting relationships with these kids, not just leave them something and be another person that goes off. So our goals are teaching soccer skills from advanced to basic levels, establishing habits of self-discipline, concentration, and hard work, building confidence and self-esteem in disadvantaged youth, and providing healthy athletic and fitness conditioning to counteract childhood obesity and promote healthy lifestyles. Our program is two years old. Today we roughly have 200 kids in our programs in Adelaide Village, Gambier Village, in Cat Island, in Dumfries Pre-K, Orange Creek Primary, and Arthurtown High School. In the fall of this year, we're looking to expand to Harbor Island, and by 2015, we're looking to have a reach of 1,000 kids. The program cycle for our project is a reflection of how my life went. I grew up, I worked hard in school, I worked hard on the soccer field. But the difference for me is I had a mother who was willing to facilitate a good lifestyle for me. Yes, I is a mother for these kids. I don't believe in luck. I believe luck is when opportunity meets preparation, and this is exactly what we do. We provide these kids opportunities, but more importantly, we prepare them for them. The program is very basic. They enter our program at age six in first grade. They go through our program, which is mandatory education and tutoring and mandatory soccer practices. It's one for one. You don't go to education component, you don't go to the soccer component, you don't play the games. That's what I find the difference in our program is, in our non nonprofit, is we use the vehicle of sport to empower these kids to want to succeed in other facets of life. As we all know as Bahamians, we have gifted kids here. We have some of the best athletes in the world. So what better idea than to use sport to motivate these kids? Luckily for me, I got off to school. I got a scholarship and I attended IMG Academies and attended their soccer program there. From there, I got a scholarship to University of North Carolina. And from there, I had a six-year career playing semi-professionally and professionally in Romania, England, Denmark, Mexico, the United States, and in Trinidad and Tobago. I then came home and I decided it's my time to give back. What our aim is, is to help get these kids and do the same thing. Ideally, maybe becoming a professional player one day, 
But if they don't make it there, at least we've given them the tools, the education, and the soccer components to at least come back and be active, influential citizens in our communities, in our society. What sport does for a child? How many of you in this room have children that participate in a sport? Raise your hand, please. I'm sure if you guys know, it teaches you many things. It teaches you teamwork. It teaches you how to work together. It teaches you humility. It teaches you how to jump extremely high for a five-year-old. <laughs> um, for me, soccer provides something different than other sports do. And it's the fact that you learn how to score as an individual, but celebrate collectively. And I think that's a facet that we miss in our culture, is we have too many individuals who will score and they turn around and they point at their name on the back of their jersey, as opposed to the crest on their badge in the village or the community they represent. So after that experience in the Children's Emergency Hostel, I decided, you know what, I need to find a place where I can find a home for these kids, where we can set some roots in a village, in a community, a place that they can come and gather, and a place where they can have a sense of pride. So after lots of walking around the island, driving and having many conversations, I came across Gambier Village. I walked through the village, and I saw a dilapidated field. I saw broken goalposts, and I saw weeds coming up to my neck. This was in August 2012, one month before the school year started. I decided I had a lot of work to do. So slowly but surely, I began to whack away with a machete. I had friends come out with cutters, clippers, started mowing with a single lawnmower. I don't know if any of you guys have a single lawnmower, but cutting weeds up to your waist is a lot of work. I canceled my gym membership at Club One, and I became the fittest I've ever been in my life. Eventually, people in the community saw what I was trying to do and we had many conversations. And that's when the story starts to change and we started to create a sense of culture and pride within the community. I told them we had two weeks left before the season started and I went and spoke to the principal of Gambier Village. Ironically, after the previous conversations we've had up here, they had no PE program at the school. So what better opportunity for us to start our program? We decided to start Yes I Soccer. This was our season, this was our field, this is what we played on in our first season. Rocks, trash cans, soda pop, feces from animals, no fence, no security, broken glass. We, we trained on this for an entire year. This is what we call the sanctuary. Then this happened. This was after eight months. This was the beginning of the summer going into this school year. The community started coming behind it. They started cleaning up around the area. We had kind donations to put lights up so the kids could play at night. We rebuilt the irrigation system. We dug a well. It began to progress. This was two weeks before the season started and two weeks before school started. I would go by on weekends and I'd see kids throwing people off the field. Guys were coming in motorcycles trying to pop wheelies and you see all the little kids yelling at them, that's our field, that's our home, don't touch it. During break times, the kids, not being asked, would go to the principals and ask their teachers, can we go down? Can we pick the weeds? Can we clear the rocks? All these are kids from the Gambier community. And at all of it, at the beginning of this season, this was our sanctuary. Now these kids from Gambier have been part of building something on their own, having a sense of pride. For me, that's what a village is all about, a place, a hub where people can gather. That's one piece of my puzzle. That's a piece where I teach them how to professionalize a sport, how to become good at a sport. But there's a key component missing, and that's the educational side. Because they could be the best athletes in the world, but no school, no university, no person is going to give them opportunity if they don't have any scholastic background. So we decided we needed a clubhouse. We must remember that one determined person can make a significant difference and that a small group of determined people can change the course of history. So we found our clubhouse. Someone donated this old, dilapidated trailer, mildew, mold, carpet, broken AC, and the people from the village started coming. We placed it down. We planted some grass around it. And we decided, hey, this is our new home. This is where we're going to do our tutoring program. This is where we're going to hold our equipment. This is where the kids are going to be able to come and hang out, a home away from home, a place where they could escape from the realities that they live in. So then it began, the real game changer. October of last year, 2013, this young man, I remembered him, and he was the biggest, I don't know if I want to call him a mess, but he fought all the time. He threw rocks from the fence. 
He cursed at kids. He was failing out of school. He was what they call a derelict. Today, he went from a 0.4 GPA to above a 2.0 GPA in one school year. He's the first one to show up to help. He's the last one to leave practice. He's always figuring out ways he can do better. And not only has our program empowered him, it's empowered his family. His father started a farm. He started growing cucumbers, tomatoes, corn, pepper, so he can sell it, so he can afford a dollar for his son to go on the bus to go to external practices that didn't happen in Gambier Village. I also promised his family and him that if he continues to work and get good grades, I'll use my connections that I fostered throughout my years of my career to get him those scholarships to the schools away. His dad's now applied for his passport, his visa, and has the money to pay for it. The story continues for all the kids. That little guy, don't let the face fool you, when I first met him, whew. But again, another great story of change. Then people who we didn't even know from the community started showing up. We started painting this trailer, and by the end of the day, we had 18 people helping us. That's what we ended up at the end of the day. So the external part has happened. This has all happened within a month now. So the next morning, I show up. We have 25 people at the trailer ready to get working. We started using our donations. We installed wall panels. During the last couple months, we've been ripping up carpet, installing porcelain tiles. Now this is our clubhouse, a place where these kids hang out, a place where they do homework, a place where they can call a sanctuary. For you, those who here has played a sport before, raise your hand, please. Do you know that feeling of when everything in your life is going wrong, but as soon as you step onto that field, everything vanishes, everything goes away? This is these kids' escape, and now they have it both on the field and off the field. It really became a home for these kids. Thanksgiving meals, Christmas meals, they spent them there as a family, as a team. Kids used to fight, not get along. Whoever could punch the hardest or throw the rock the hardest or, or steal the most, now are kids who are completely different people. The tutoring program started. By the way, we have a mandatory GPA requirement of 2.0. Every single one of our kids that entered our program in the beginning of September have above a 2.0 right now. We give them the use of sport as a tool for them to have a goal. Because prior to it, they didn't have anywhere. They didn't have any aspirations. I would ask them, why don't you go to school? Why don't you go to class? Why? Why am I going to go to school? Why am I going to go to class? Well, now they have a reason. They have a soccer team they want to be on. They have friends on the weekend. This all happened without any of our intervention. This is a picture that I took on a Saturday morning. They all went to the trailer. As you can see, little guys doing their homework, hanging out, watching TV. Little motto that I come by is give a child a fishing pole, not a fish, but make them work for it. And this is where I think our program really skyrockets and makes a difference in a change, is because every single tool that this kid uses, his soccer cleats, his shin guards, his jerseys, he has to work for. He has to have above a 2.0 GPA. He has to go to the mandatory educational components, along with showing up to practice on time, staying for the entire time, behaving while they're there. The kids leave school. The older ones go directly to tutoring. The younger ones go directly to practice. After an hour and a half, they switch. They know if they don't have good grades, they don't show up, they don't get the cleats. We present them in a way where it's very appealing. I don't know if anyone knows the story about Michael Jordan, but he wore a brand new pair of basketball shoes to every game. And they asked him why. He's like, well, don't you remember that feeling when you were a little kid and you had brand new shoes and it can make you run faster and jump higher? This is the first thing these, these kids see every time they walk into the trailer. This is how they used to play on their basketball court prior. This is a kid after our program, a smile on their face, getting their new shoes first time. And the thing is, these kids work for it. There's a sense of entitlement there. The next phase was making the team. It required a month of them to do all the tasks that I, that I just mentioned. This is a typical Saturday morning for me, for another one of our coaches sitting in the front of the audience. 15 kids in a trailer, under 10. Six years old, seven year olds, eight year olds, all getting up on their own inhibition, waking up when the rooster calls in the morning. They get there, we feed them breakfast, we get them going, off to the games. This was the first day of our season this year, and 
That's a six-year-old kid who just got his jersey. It was playing against life or key. I've never seen a kid cry out of happiness in my entire life. I've seen adults cry out of happiness, and as a child, I never understood it because I never had that feeling. That picture to me says a thousand words. This kid, just like the stories earlier, at six years old, wakes up and goes and gets water for his family. After school, he has to go home and clean his mother's closet. Then he has to go to the store and get food for dinner, and then he comes to training. Six years old. We started two years ago with a bunch of individuals, and now we have a team, people who understand what it takes to be part of a team, people who understand that it takes commitment, hard work, communication, humility, learning that everyone has a place in this team, or more importantly, in society. Kids who used to be outcasts might be team managers. Kids who are the bigger ones who used to be teased for being fat are then forces in our defensive line or just as important as the guys that are speeding down the wings or scoring the goals. Not only do we have a team now, we have a winning team. We have a team that didn't win one game our first season to a team, in my opinion, which is one of the best teams on this island, a team that's motivated, a group of players who have a vision now, a focus, this need and the strive to go somewhere else in their life. I came across this quote, and I think it's very relevant to what's going on in our community and also our program. Snowflakes are one of nature's most fragile things, but just look what they can do when they stick together. I want everyone to think about that quote for a while. Because prior to all this, we had a bunch of snowflakes, but they were individuals melting away. Now we have a team, people who used to be enemies, supporting each other, picking each other up when they're getting, when they're getting knocked down instead of laughing at them. Future athletes who now have the educational backup to go somewhere. Kids who I can assure you will get scholarships in middle schools and boarding schools and universities and, in my opinion, professional athletes. Kids who are determined. You can see it in the focus in their eyes. Kids who have this drive to succeed. Kids who now have hope. Now, these guys are prepared for the most difficult task in their lives, their future. Thank you.